Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Raw Knuckles podcast. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and share with a friend. How was it playing with uh, St. Louis? And are you surprised? Are you surprised he's the head coach today? I'm not. I love Marty St. Louis. Um, one of my favorite teammates of all time. Um, I remember walking into Tampa. I get traded from Anaheim, like I was telling you guys. Somehow, they, Jay Feaster gave <laughs> Jay gave up a first rounder for me. That could go down as maybe his worst <laughs> trade ever. But I, I, I walk in this dressing room and. They had won the Stanley Cup, what, in, in 04? When did they beat the Flames, boys? Oh, whatever, 03, 04. Yeah, it was right before yeah, the lockout. Yeah, the, the, the last good Stanley Cup fought. The last good Stanley yeah, Cup yeah. final with hooking and or holding. the captains and fought. fought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The last good one. When I stepped on the ice, I never backed down, and I never stayed down. And I was <laughs> vicious, and I was malicious, and I don't care. <laughs> He's a freaking madman! Look at him going to town! That'll be a suspension! So how's it going, up, Shane? Good, good. Just grinding away like you boys are doing. You guys are doing good things. I like it. Yeah. Obes, I don't know if you got my vote, but I've. it was your fault. Why? No, not, no on Kane's goal. I saw oh, Kane yeah. across that cliff. Did you say it was my fault? Yeah, no, that's my vote. I'm giving you my vote. It was your fault. You don't think Louis should have had it? I mean, I, he goes to his backhand. It's a little muffin across the, across the. You uh, had like the old uh, one hand up, team, you know, like the old. I know. I'll tell you like what, the, my my gap wasn't very good. That I do know. He was mirroring m- mirroring him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. The old. I was gonna do oh, the old can funny. opener, but. All righty. Well, Shane, welcome to the Raw Knuckles podcast. Uh, Thanks for joining us today. Awesome stuff. Uh, uh, Listen, uh, Port Hope, Ontario, your family, Dennis O'Brien. I remember Dennis when I was a kid in Boston playing for the Bruins. Um, Would you say you're from a hockey family? Did your dad play? Uh, What's the deal? Yeah, if you ask my dad, Knuckles, he said he could play, right? He said he, he said he could pass, he couldn't skate. I said, Dad, we got a lot of similarities then, right? That was that was my scouting report to a certain extent. But uh, no, you know, growing up in Port Hope, um, obviously with my uncle Dennis O'Brien playing in the NHL, um, you know, it gave me hope, Knuckles, right? I realized that, hey, if he could do it, and then Paul Trebensi, uh sorry, Paul Trebensi, Jimmy Roberts, uh, Ronnie Smith, a few other guys, and it was, it was pretty cool back in the day, fellas, up. Uh, at the Jack Burger Sports Complex, they'd have the NHL guys' pictures on the wall. So you'd walk in, I'd see my uncle, I'd see all these other guys. And I don't know, it just gave me motivation that, you know, especially if my uncle could do it. And then obviously he helped me throughout my career once I got to junior and into pro and stuff like that. It was, it just made me feel like it was possible. So uh, Port Hope, uh, you know, on the 401, heading to Toronto from Montreal. And Dennis being a, um, your uncle Dennis being a Boston Bruin, were you a, a Bees fan growing up in Canada? Obviously, kids are either back in the day were Habs fans or Leafs fans. Uh, how about the O'Brien family? Well, my dad was definitely a Bruins fan. Uh, you know, I had a, uh, growing up, I had my uncle's jersey, 28, he wore 28 in Boston. Yeah. So um, I had that jersey in my house. And, and actually, the guy's jersey behind you, number four there, that's, that was my dad, uh, Pat Pitter O'Brien's favorite player. So I heard a lot about Bobby Orr. Uh, I heard about all the uh, all the good road trips back in the day. My dad would go down to Boston. I don't even know if he was invited, <laughs> Knuckles, but he'd go down to Boston, <laughs> stay for a couple weeks, and go to the bar with the boys and hang out. So it was a great thrill for my dad. But um, I'm definitely not a Canadiens fan. Sorry, Knuckles. Uh, okay. I grew up a Leafs fan, so <laughs> I, I would favor the Boston Bruins over the Montreal Canadiens. But. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, there was a day that um, um, I would favor the Bees over the Habs, too, when I was a kid. But – that changed uh, pretty quickly once I started playing in the league. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, who were some of your favorite players growing up? Who'd you model your game after? Or, like look up to? Yeah, Steve. Uh, you know, I, I grew up I, when I was a kid. I was a forward, but uh, they moved me to D. I don't know when I was in Pee Wee or whatever. But anyways, growing up, I was a huge Wendell Clark was my first favorite player. Uh. I love Wendell, and then uh, Dougie Gilmore uh, throughout the nineties. Dougie obviously in ninety three. Still not over it. You know, the high stick that Gretz got <laughs> Dougie with that wasn't called. I, you know, I called Kerry Frazier out on it, to be honest with you. Still not over it. So, uh, <laughs> Wendell and, and then Dougie G were my two favorite players, Stapes. Did, did you have Kerry on the podcast? We did have Kerry on the podcast. And did Knuckles, you rip him? His, 
I ripped him, but his hair still is knuckles. His hair is still just as good as ever. I'm like, oh, it's amazing. When I first, my first game against Kerry Frazier, I wasn't probably my first game. I was probably my second or third year in the league. My rookie, year, I wouldn't have enough balls to say something to him, but um, I, I had one or two years without his helmet on. So my second or third year, I said, "Hey, great hair." And then when they made him put his helmet on knuckles, I was like, first time I played against <laughs> the him, like, worst. I can't believe they're making you wear a helmet. Yeah, it was the worst. Yeah. You're like, you <laughs> fucked up that high stick call. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you saw your career, yeah, you, you know, Cincinnati and the American League <laughs> after you get out of junior and then uh, your first NHL game with the Ducks, then on to Tampa Bay for three years in Tampa Bay, Vancouver, Nashville, Colorado, Calgary. W- what were your best years in the NHL as far as what team you play for, your, the best group you were with? Yeah, well, you said Calgary there. That's that's where my career went to die, Knuckles. I try to forget Calgary. That was uh, I was a tough little stretch <laughs> Sorry about there. That. But, I uh, had to throw it in. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's okay. Um, you know, I, I was lucky, Knuckles. I'll start right from the beginning. You know, playing with the Ducks, my my rookie year. You boys both know it takes it takes an opportunity or a spot to open up for you. So they make Berkey makes the pronger deal. Um, you know, and there it is, a sixty man spot up for grabs. And I said, you know, this is mine. No one's taking it from me. So I was lucky enough to make the team. And then being around those guys, Chris Pronger, Scott Niedemeyer, Tamu Solani, Travis Green, Tard Marchant, um, the list goes on and on. I learned so much that rookie year, and unfortunately, Berkey decided to trade me uh, two days before the deadline, and those boys went on to win the Stanley Cup. So I, mm. not that I ever got to enjoy the best part of it, the run, partying with the cup, getting the ring, all that fun stuff, but I got to play on a championship team so young that I learned so much from those guys, Knuckles. So... You go from the Ducks, Tampa Bay, all that, Vancouver. I want to get to Vancouver. Um, and, uh, you know, you played a physical tough game, all that. Now, Vancouver, I listen to BX all the time, and he talks about what a culture you had there as a group. And I, I love that guy. I, love, I, I don't know him. I've only watched him. I talked to him one time on the phone. And I really love him uh, on Sportsnet here in Canada, uh, Saturday nights. I think he's he's awesome. Um, I'm going to give you – I want to see how well um, you know or you knew your teammates there. All right? I'm going to ask – I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to give you a couple like teammates. of um, uh, little scouting reports on two teammates. One will be a D-man, one will be a forward. I'll give you the forward first. I'm just right, going to read it. He was an energetic agitator who also has skills with the puck. An excellent skater with a good defensive game. Decent hands, sharp wrist shot. He has gained some negative reputation as a diver due to embellishing. Who am I talking about? This is a forward, right? Yep. This one's easy. Ryan Kessler. <laughs> nope. Not Kess? No. Okay, Kess. then my second guess, my, my second guess, when you first said it, then you said diver. Sorry, Kess, I love you, but I went, fuck, Kess used to dive all the time. Um, Alex Burrows? Yeah, you got it. Burrows. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, it was one of those two fuckers. That's all right, awesome. so now <laughs> the second guy, he, he's a D-man. <clears throat> now, you played two years there, so I don't know if there was much, much changeover, but he's a D-man with a great size and reach. Can play a stay-at-home style, but also has decent offensive instincts, Likes to play a mean physical game from the back end. Somewhat limited when it comes to skating and agility, though. <laughs> well, Knuckles, in those two years, there was lots of turnover off the ice. I'll tell you that, buddy. There was lots of turnover <laughs> off the ice. Um, that sounds like my boy, Willie Mitchell. Is that Willie Mitchell? That's what and, I said. Yeah, that's exactly what Tim said. And uh, you're wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> You didn't. You didn't do a trick question. Give me my own scouting report. Did that's you said offensive you, flair? Can't you, be me. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? When I when I said it, I thought you might say Bexa for a minute, and you know, but I yeah, those fits Bexa's mold. Those you would, if you would have said like nobody plays the role of just like working the bench or the blue line, I would have said Kevin Bexa, <laughs> right? Like he used to just meet mug everyone. <laughs> like funny story. I, I love Juice Knuckles. I love Juice. And my, my third year, or my year I got traded to Nashville, it was a weird situation. We, we beat uh, the Ducks in the first round, 
and we get Vancouver in the second round. And for me, you know, playing with those guys for two years, it was a weird situation. And finally, I think it's like game four in Nashville. I, I just turned to be X guy TV timeout, and I'm like, let's fucking go right now. I've had enough of this. I've had enough of you fucking marching up and down this bench. Let's go right now. And he basically was like, I'm not fighting in the playoffs, Holmes. But how much you love having that guy on your team, and Staves, I don't know if you played against him or not. I love Kevin Biesko, but Knuckles, that's how much he gets under your skin when you're playing against him, especially in the playoffs. Yeah, nasty, right? Yeah, I went, I just, I, I didn't play with him, but I played in like a charity thing with him out in England. This was like a few summers ago. Great guy. Yeah, great he guy. Loves fight. Loves like he fight. loves to 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 fight. Great teammate. He was actually, we were roommates, Knuckles, me and Juice. When I first got to Vancouver, they put me and Juice as roommates together, and it lasted probably, I give him the benefit of the doubt, it lasted probably four months, but it was the best thing ever. He went and said, I can't roommate with Obes, and Steve, you'll appreciate this. They gave him my own room. So I didn't deserve, I didn't have enough games to get my own room. I'm like the next day I'm like juice. I owe you, buddy. I got my own room on the road now. This is unbelievable. So that's my my favorite Kevin Bexa story that he he kicked me out of his room. <laughs> so the, so oh, the fight awesome. game. Now I want to get to that. And you know, in in looking at your history, and certainly not afraid to drop the gloves. Um, you, you had that incident with Pavelski where um, he apparently speared Sadine and. Uh, there was a, a altercation, post game altercation. Now, was that post game altercation? Was it on the ice or was it in the hallway? Where was it? What happened there? You know what, Knuckles? Funny you bring that up. We went through my we went through my fines and I had more fines than suspension stapes. And I can tell you what, I can use that money right now. The way the market's going, stapes. Yeah, who do I call, who do I call for that, Knuckles? Do I call the hey, union? You're fine. You owe us money from not showing up last time. You owe us. <laughs> Um, oh. you know what had happened? I didn't really remember it till we, we were talking about it last week, but do you remember at the old shark tank where you kind of went off the ice that like that way, like at the one end stapes? You remember that? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I was coming off the, the game had ended and he was coming back to go to his bench and I was going to get off the ice and I kind of went at him. So I think it happened on the ice to answer your question. And you know, not that Pavolsky is the toughest guy, but obviously, listen, there were some long nights back in the day in that rink. You know, I remember going in there my first year at Vancouver. You know, we were first in the the old Pacific Division or no, Northwest Division. You know, we go in there, they beat us 7-1 or something. Like, it was a lot of long nights. And the Sedins, they were my guys. I had to think, you know, I had to protect them. Obviously, Pavolsky's sure. not a killer, but sure. something that pissed me off. Yeah. <clears throat> You had a couple. You had some battles with the Blackhawks those years too. Who did you hate? Who did you hate on that team? Oh, Very I mean, day. yeah, Steve. Those that was good old fashioned <laughs> hockey, there, buddy. Um, I hated first and foremost. I hated Adam Burrish more than anyone. Neither man able to get a lot started yet, but O'Brien got the right hand loose. He's swinging away, and Burrish looking to answer. And another right from O'Brien seemed to land. And you can see the strength of the left arm of O'Brien. Burch just can't get his right arm loose. And the size and strength of O'Brien telling a tale in this bout. Uh, and I, I got to give Burch credit. He fought me. Knuckles, you know how it goes, right? I get traded to Vancouver. I haven't had a fight yet. It's just like I'm trying to find my role. So we're at the old madhouse. And I kind of go in this pile and grab him. And it was a mismatch for him. So I always give him credit that he fought me. But um, I hated him. He had such great chirps. Uh, ben Eager, I, I love Eager <laughs> yeah. as a person. Fucking hated Ben Eager, and then the guys I, the guy I always wanted to get my hands on was was Big Buff, and this was for this was before Big Buff was <laughs> really Big Buff. You know, he was probably yeah, he was probably he was just big. He was just big. He was just big. big. Yeah. And uh, he's playing forward, yeah. and Stapes. He was in he was in Louis Kitchen every game, man, and just standing there. And um, those were great rivalries, but those three guys, I, I, I you know, they hated me. I hated Dave Bolin. You can throw Bully in there. Bully single-handedly, and I love Bully, he single-handedly took the Sedins off their game both series. They couldn't play. I'm like, boys, don't worry about this guy. Just, and, and, I mean, they have nightmares still, I bet you, about Bully. Yeah, that's easy to tell someone don't worry about him, but, you yeah. know, to get somebody <laughs> know. Know, to worry, <laughs> yeah. it's a different deal. But, yeah, I, I got to ask you, you know, the, the thing with Mike Gillis, you know, where he apparently applied that he was only interested in you fighting. What went on there? How did that... How did that come about? And then, you know, in the end, you, you you said you made some comments out of frustration, and that really wasn't what he was implying. Was it or was it not? Knuckles, great question, buddy. Way to do your homework, eh? What a, what a pro this guy is here. Um, yeah, so, 
it's, I haven't talked about this in forever. Um, so Good. Listen, I, I want to hear year, this because I, yeah, you know I was, what? Listen, yeah. and, and, and I, I'm going to let you go in a sec. I, yeah, yeah. I've had fucking problems with coaches and, and GMs over the fucking years. Believe me, I have. So I, I know I've been there. I've been in the middle of it, and I know what it's like. It's, it's not fun. But I ain't going to be a fucking pushover either. I never was, never will be. And when yeah. I read this, I'm thinking – I'm. I'm not thinking shit disturb. I'm thinking someone who stands up for themselves, someone who got a little fucking mm-hmm. backbone. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's that's how yeah, I was looking good. at it too. So I'll go back to, you know, I get traded to Tampa and they gave up a first rounder for me and I was given every opportunity in Tampa by John Torrell and Jay Feaster. Jay God, I love you, buddy. Uh, and then I get traded to Vancouver. And the first thing my AV says to me is, I got to be honest with you, I don't know much about you. And I'm like, well, here we go. Now I'm fucking starting all over here. It's my fourth <laughs> year in the league. This I just flew across the fucking country, and this is the first thing this guy's gonna say <laughs> say to me. Like, so, anyways, Knuckles, we get going. And when Mike, when I got traded to Vancouver, Mike Gilly said to me, he said, "Obi, we need you to play tough. We need you to be a good guy. We're we're gonna we're gonna have a hard time making the playoffs." I said, oh, "I think you got a pretty good team, so we're gonna have a hard time making the playoffs." Anyways, we got off to a great start. We're we're leading the division. Um, I, I think at this time I got like ten fights, eight or ten fights, right? And uh, we lose eight straight at home. And, you know, Mike calls me into his office, him and AV, and says, are you, are you fucking cutting deals out there? When's the last time you've been in a fight? I said, what? I go, I tried to fight Clarkson last week. We were down 3 nothing before the first fucking TV timeout. He wouldn't fight me. The game before that, we were down fucking 4-1 before I had my second shift. I tried to fight so-and-so. He wouldn't fight me. Are you fucking kidding me? Call me a deal cutter? I'm like top 10 in the league in fighting. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not cutting deals yeah, out there. Yeah, that sucks. And that's, yeah, and, and I just... You know, I, I, the media came to me. They healthy scratched me after they said that to me. Uh, the media came to me, and that's what I said. And then, and fuck, Knuckles, my phone blew up. I had Roger Sportsnet. <laughs> I had my agent call me. So I had to backtrack a bit, Knuckles. I, I, I got to be yeah. honest. I, I like that you give me respect, but I bitched out a little bit, and I had to pull back and apologize, or I, I don't know what would have happened. But, yeah, he, he called me a deal cutter, and I said, what are you talking about, man? I'm down here trying to fight. You know how it is. If, if, if you're yeah. losing games and, and we're down, it's – Tough. Fuck. It, and you're not a deal. I played with you. You're like. I mean, I would know, cut deals with knuckles. I would have been cutting you're, deals with knuckles. Cut- <laughs> I would have said. Yeah. Hey, I would have said knuckles. Yeah, but you're not deal cutting. I would have said knuckles. What'd you do last night, buddy? How was dinner? Where'd you go, buddy? Yeah. What's going on? Well, you know, the fucking AB. Uh, well, I like to know how many fucking fights he had in junior. And and I'll tell you, what almost broke me in my career was a fucking coach who didn't know if it was the dumbest fucking guy. I ever played for, and he happened to be the coach I won a Stanley Cup with, Jean Perron, who challenged me in front of my teammates saying, when's the last time you had a fight? We were in a losing streak, and I fucking snapped at him. Fuck you. What do you know about fighting? I give it right back to him, and you know what? It it cost me my place in Montreal, that fucking guy. But one thing I stay true (laughs) to is myself. (laughs) And it, it almost broke yeah. me because I never wanted to play for another fucking hockey team other than the Montreal Canadiens. After being there for as long as I was, the passion, the love for the organization I had, for the, the being grateful for the opportunity I got. So that that's why I, I had to know this. And then, yeah, then we go further. Just real quick, I'll, yeah, go ahead. I just want to tag what you. I want to tag what you said. First of all, Knuckles, I love your I love your shirt. That's a sick shirt. Um, but when, 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 when coaches take fighting and GMs take fighting for granted, and listen, Knuckles, I never fought like you. I'm not going to sit here and say I went no, fucking but you, toe-to-toe. You still did. Walker, it doesn't matter. I, I, I did it to yeah, protect you, my teammates. Yeah, I, agree. I did it to protect my teammates. I did it to – it was a feather in my cap, I thought. But when you start taking it for granted as a GM and coach and question the guys that are doing it <sighs> – and listen, Vancouver – I played against Vancouver before. I got there. Horachuk got there. and Ripper got there. We went into GM place as visiting teams as the Anaheim Ducks, and we did whatever the fuck we wanted. Whatever. Yeah. Bieksa wasn't doing shit. There was nobody doing shit. Yeah. Brings us all in, and now all of a sudden we have one of the toughest teams in the league, and now you're going to question me? Like, yeah. fuck off. That's what had a bad – that's what – I was like, I can't take this. Yeah. yeah. And I don't blame you. You know, it's just like <laughs> people don't have a clue what that job entails. You know, they, they look at it, they glorify it, and then all of a sudden, you know, you got some guy questioning. I always said to myself, I have a, a coach tells me when to do it, I'm going to fucking snap at him. And it never happened yeah, that until that too. day. And um, it never happened again. That was the one time. But so so with Vino, um, to go a little further now, 
um, uh, apparently uh, you had to sit out three games. He he, he announced that for dis disciplinary reason. Excuse me. Take the fucking bubble gum out yeah. of my mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was supposedly over missing uh, being late for a practice. But he said he contends. <clears throat> Uh, it, that wasn't the only thing. There's more uh, to the situation than Shane O'Brien being late. <clears throat> what? Yeah, you what's definitely were. What's the more? You, obviously, you're you know, late. What's the more? Yeah. You're obviously late. You started a podcast <laughs> called Missing Curfew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, obviously, you were late. <laughs> yeah. So, Knuckles, I love it, buddy. You're 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 on the ball here. You're on the ball today, fella. I, 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 so listen, uh, Knuckles. I admit a lot when I when I came back to Vancouver. Listen, I was a single kid playing in a Canadian city on a good fucking team. All right. And yeah, I, I enjoyed every single, I enjoyed every <laughs> single second of it. And did I enjoy it too much? Maybe, but that's what motivated me to play hard and, and to fight and to compete and, and whatever. I enjoyed it. So me and AV, like I said, we got off to, a, you know, the, the first thing he said to me was what I told you, but I don't know much about you. Like, you know, I thought, what the fuck is this guy? Right. So our first year goes by, we lose the Hawks. The second year goes by, things are going pretty well. And in his defense, you know, we, we fly home from San Jose on a Saturday night, right? He gives us Sunday off. So we get in too late, Knuckles, that I can't go out on the Saturday night. So I get up Sunday. It's a beautiful day in Vancouver. It's not raining. I'm oh. like, here we go, boys. Let's go hit the <laughs> patios. So I go hit the patios. And we don't play till probably Wednesday or Thursday, but we do have practice on Monday. So I go hit the patios. And at that time, Knuckles, in Vancouver, like it or love it, I, I – Probably loved it. People recognized me, right? So I was bouncing around by myself at this point. The rest of the boys went home, the married boys. I'm bouncing around Vancouver by myself. And I'm going home, and I'm walking past the Roxy, and I said, you know what? I'll go in for one. Let's see what's going on in there. So I go in, I go in for one, and go home, fall asleep. Long story short, I don't plug my cell phone in, you know. So my phone dies. I wake up, and I look at my phone, and, and you know when you're like, oh, oh. So I got to charge. Now I got to charge it, boys. I don't have a clock in the fucking house. Maybe I went to my TV. Maybe I turned my TV on. I'm like, oh, boy. So anyways, I scramble. My phone comes on. I call the trainer. I said, I'm on my way. I drive to the rink. I get there five, about 10 minutes before the boys are supposed to go on. So I'm putting my gitch on. I'm fucking running in there. And the trainer comes, and he said, he doesn't want you to go out there. And I said, fuck him. Let me just practice. And then after practice, if he wants to fucking talk to me or fucking rip me, fine. Just let me go out there and practice with the boys. All right, I'm here. I can get dressed and get on the ice. He said, he's not going on. So he goes, go to the gym, go to the gym, get a workout. So I go in and get a workout and Stan Smeal, he's a beauty. Steamer comes in and he just kind of gives me a pat on the back. I said, fuck, you know, he said. So anyways, like you said about the the, the, the media in Vancouver, obviously is huge. And they asked him about Shane O'Brien. And this is the problem I had, like. You know what? If if you're not happy with me, fine. But don't air, air out our dirty laundry. You know, you could he could have protected me in the media and then said, "Listen, Obes, we're going to say you have a fucking pulled groin. We're going to you're not playing the next fucking week. You know, I want you to lose some weight." Buries me in the media. They asked him like ten times. You know, who's Shane? What's going on with Shane O'Brien? I'm not talking about Shane O'Brien. I'm not talking about Shane O'Brien. So suspends me. Turns into a huge thing. Um, yeah, and, and you know what, Knuckles. I, I, yeah, after that, though, we had they our don't best. Let it go, right? They don't let it go. The they media. don't let it go. No. After that suspension, I came back and I had a talk with AV. It was the best talk we had in two years. And I said to him, why didn't we have this conversation a year ago? Why did it take this to finally, and our relationship's been great ever since that. Wow. Well, that's, were, were you ever late again in your career? I heard a story <laughs> you told, uh, were you, Grant Fear was your uh, assistant? You were running. No, I tell that. I, no I yeah, 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 that. yeah. So this is my first, this is my first year in pro hockey, Cincinnati. I'm playing for Cincy Knuckles. And we're playing in Salt Lake. And at this time, the Coyotes are in Salt Lake. They're, that's their farm team. So the hotel was probably two football fields away from the rink. And this is just pregame nap. I used to be a heavy sleeper. Now, Knuckles, I'm up to take four pisses a night. I don't sleep. And I would have never been late now. <laughs> <clears throat> I sleep right through my alarm. My roommate leaves me. And I, I'm like, the game's in like 30 minutes. So I wake up. I throw my suit on. And I'm literally running across the parking lot in Salt Lake City. And there's fucking, <laughs> there's old Coco, Grand, there's old Coco, Grand Fear, And I fucking run it by him. I'm like, hey, Fearsy, how you doing? He's like, don't worry, kid, could happen to anyone. And I'm just running in my suit. I'm like. <laughs> oh, well, you bring oh, up the man, Roxy. Awesome. And it's funny. I went there. I was retired. And I was in Vancouver. And Chicago was in town. Chelly was there. And I bump into Chelly. And. You know, we were having some fun, and we went out front, 
and Hassock's in line. So I said, watch this, Chelly. And I went up to Hassock and I said, uh, Dominic Hassock? He said, yeah. <laughs> I said, Vancouver police. <laughs> he said, what? What for? I said, listen, um, you're under suspicion for uh, a sexual assault here that happened last time you were in town. <laughs> well, he went like that. What? What you talking about? I said, you got to come with me. Come down the station. I grabbed him by the arm. He pulled away. I said, hey. I grabbed him. Oh, fuck. Then Chelly came up, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I scared the living shit out of Dominic Hassock. You would not believe it. And, and we went in afterwards and had a few. He fucking didn't come near me. He, he was, it, <laughs> me and Chelly, I'm telling you, we laughed so hard that night. But that was my last time at the Roxy. And I'll never. Yeah, I used to see, I, I used to see Chelly in there. The one thing about the, my two years there, the Red Wings... Listen, it's a, otherwise we know it's a road bar. I remember one night I went in there with, with Loops and Oppie. They're playing for the Flyers. And I meet this girl, and she's like, you, you play for the Philadelphia Flyers, right? And I said, no, no, I, I play here for the Canucks. She's like, no, no, I, I came here to be a Flyer. I, I go, I, I can pretend I play for the Flyers if you want. If, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. So it was known as a road bar. And I would see, you know, the Red Wings, when they came in, you know, from Lindstrom down, those guys after a game or if they got in from playing Edmonton two nights before, a lot of those boys would go in there as a team, and I always respected that from a veteran team like the Red Wings that they would just go in the roller and have a good time as a whole team. Tim, Tim, you're around you're around the game a lot today. Like that doesn't happen anymore, right? Like I guys, think the last team, out, that, I think the last team doing it is like, I you gotta love the Tampa Bay Lightning, don't you? I think the Lightning, I think they gotta go to the Roxy if they're in Vancouver. I, I just love that team for the fact that <clears throat> you, you know you see them. Stammer breaks his record for or gets whatever five hundred goals, thousand points ice cold beers in the room. I, I don't know. I think that team does it. Um, and the team like the Leafs, I, I don't know if a team like the Leafs does stay. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're just keeping it undercover, but I don't know. I still think there's room for, you got to go out and have a good time every now and then with the boys. I don't care how fast yeah. it is out there. Yeah. You got to be, just doesn't have to be every night is what you're saying. You just don't have to do it like I did, Steve. Yeah, pick your spiel, you know? Yeah, 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 you don't yeah. have to do it like I did. You got to figure teams that are fucking yeah. in last place, like Chicago or Columbus or these Phoenix and these teams, you got to figure they'd want to fucking go out, right? Like, and they you probably know don't. You know what, Knuckles? It's so true, buddy. I was thinking about that this week, just these bad teams. My one year, the lockout year in Colorado, you know, we had such a shitty fucking year. And, and, and there was... I took pride in being a dressing room guy, Knuckles, and, and for the first time ever, this team this team was separated and it was clicky and the it was just not good. And and I was going out a lot. And Sherman called me in and said, "You know, you, you're going out, Greg Sherman." He said, "You're going out a lot." I said, "Did you check where we are in the fucking standings?" <laughs> yeah, I'm going out a lot. Everyone should be going out a lot. Like, what? 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 what do you, who cares at this point? Like, who cares what we do? Yeah, it, it's funny. Losing's I, the worst. Yeah, it is. Oh. There's no question. Uh huh. And it's funny, look, I, I look back in the, you know, my, my early days, I'm coming in Montreal, I mean, every day, every day, we come out of that building, went across the street to the tavern with Kevin Ye. Everybody had to show up, and you didn't have to stay all afternoon, but you had to be there for lunch. Everybody came in, stayed for half hour, hour. And then there was a group that would go home early, the married guys, kids, and then the younger guys all hang around. It was, it was, it was part of it. I know that's changed somewhat, but um, yeah, it's different today. Yeah. Obviously. If you love your pet like I love my St. Bernard Adele, you'll want to feed them a balanced, biologically appropriate raw diet. The reason I've chosen Formula Raw is because all blends of their food are locally sourced and they consist of exclusively human-grade meat and organs, as well as fruits and vegetables. And all products used are hormone and antibiotic-free. So like I said, if you love your pet like I love Adele, you'll choose Formula Raw. Make sure you go to FormulaRaw.com and use the promo code RAWNUX at checkout to receive 10% off your first order. That's RAWNUX, R-A-W-K-N-U-S. No, Knuckles, you know what? Uh, Rick Bonus, Bonesy. I love Bonesy. He's you know, obviously head coach in Winnipeg now. He's my yeah. D coach in, 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 in Vancouver. And a couple times a year, Nashville, uh, maybe Dallas or whatever, he'd, he'd round up the D guys and say, hey, you know, we're going, we're going for beers. Meet at 4 o'clock in the lobby. And we'd go as a group of 6 or 7 D. 
and you will stay for one beer. Fine. You, you, you know, if you were like me and stayed on Broadway till, you know, curfew or whatever, fine. But it was just nice to get your decor together. You know, like guys that you, you, we had a pretty tight team, but I just thought it was cool to get the guys together, have a couple of beers. And I think it helped us as a group. Yeah, it's like healthy, I think. And not as weird as that sounds. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Now it's like, hey, let's go play like this video game tournament. And they're up later than we were, probably. We <laughs> actually know. got more sleep than these nerds now. I <laughs> know, know, right? I, I had one one of my buddies that was coaching in the league. He had to like ban them from taking their video games on the road. I was like, that's what you're worried about <laughs> on the road? Knuckles, if you go to Montreal <laughs> and you're playing video games, you don't deserve to be in the NHL. Oh, yeah, what yeah, a yeah. city that is. See you later. <laughs> if if oh, you don't man. spend an afternoon in Chez Paris, the day before the game, you have a problem. So, hey, Tim, Knuckles is is, uh, is is go ahead. Is Bonanote still is Bonanote still open in Montreal? Or is I, you that know, place... I don't know. I don't. I have no clue on that whole scene. Honestly, I yeah. don't pay attention to it. I'm out of it. Tim said, you know, that's so healthy for uh, for players and teams, but. It, w- yeah. it was real it healthy for us, and, Tim, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. no, I'm just saying it's, a, it's you no, know, the bonds. I, like, I, they're yeah, insane, yeah. right? No, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I, I just think that doesn't – that's like, – so I don't know. It's needed, but maybe I'm. that's why I'm doing a podcast. And don't play hockey. <laughs> hey, I hear you, buddy. I hear you. I, <laughs> I want to ask you uh, a couple about a couple of teammates, and I'm going to start yeah. with one I, uh, and, and what you thought of them and – did you ever see coming what became of him? And that's Rick Ripon. Yeah, love Ripper. Um, you know what? With Ripper, listen, I got traded to Vancouver my first year, and we were both living at the Sutton Place Hotel. And this is before I really knew what was going on with Rip. But, you know, I'd come back from, from lunch or dinner, and there'd always be a do not disturb sign on his door. And I'm like, fuck this – you know, what's going on with this guy? And, you know, took a leave of absence the first year and then came back for the playoffs. And then the off season, and then I, our second year in Vancouver, I, I seen something switch with Rip that, um, you know, he was happy and, 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 and we became really good buddies. You know, Ripper was, I was telling you the story about the Sunday on the patio was in Vancouver. Ripper was with me all day that day. Um, you know, met a girl that year, was happy with her. Obviously something went wrong there. Um, so to answer your question, I always knew there, that, that Rip was dealing with something. Um, I thought he had turned a corner, yeah. you know, the second year in Vancouver. And, and, you know, when I heard the news, uh, crushed like everybody else, um, you know, people maybe don't know about Ripper, great sense of humor, funny guy, love to laugh. And I mean, you talk about tough knuckles. Yeah. I mean, this guy, I, I, I mean, heard. are you kidding me? Like yeah, this guy and could play, could play, like yeah. make plays, score goals, hit. Yeah. And just absolutely sit in the pocket and fight. You know what? He wasn't very big either, was he? No. Yeah. And yeah. he would go lefty knuckles and yeah. he would hold that yeah. left up and block it. Yeah. And then, like, he was – no, he wasn't very big. You know, it's a shame because it, it it's terrible to see how people slip through the cracks, even when you know they have an issue. We think of um, the former USA gold medalist and NHL ranger, uh, um, Mark Pavlich, right? Um uh, Rick Rippin, uh, in a day and age where mental health was, you know, starting to be looked at more, still not where it is today. And um, a guy slips through the cracks like that. It's, it, and sometimes, it, you, you know, you, you know, there might be something wrong with someone and they're having issues and you're trying to work with them. And, you know, people obviously for different reasons don't open up and, don't accept the help either. And I'm not saying he didn't. It's just a shame when you see someone slip through the cracks like that. But uh, And he's not yeah, the only one. It really but, was. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask you now about another teammate. Who was your favorite teammate in the NHL? Oh, oh I was so lucky. I had so many good, like, so many you good gotta teammates. you got to give me one. You know, yeah, Zen and Kanapka. <laughs> oh still- fuck! I love I love Z. I love Z. Z's the man. I love Z too. I, I battle against Z. Uh, I battle against Z in junior. He played for the Ottawa 67s. I was in Kingston. I fought Z in the minors probably two or three times. We signed this guy the lockout year. I'm like fucking Kanapka. Like seriously, we're signing Zen and Kanapka. He's nuts. He's nuts. So he's nuts. he comes. He's nuts. He comes to training camp. And I'm like, you know, look at this fucking hero. I'm thinking it's an act, right? I'm like, <laughs> look at this fucking. So right, training camp, fight him in training camp. 
and, and then just something clicked to me and I was like, this is not an act. This is Zen and Konopka. And mm-hmm. he became one of my greatest friends, my greatest teammates. Um, what he did, the, the, as far as Z got, it was unbelievable. I mean, at least I'll tell you a story. The second year we're playing the Chicago Wolves in the playoffs and, and Z takes a puck right above the knee that cuts him for fuck a million. St- I don't even know. It was gross. The, the cut was this big. Probably happened in game one or two because I think I think they swept us or beat us in five. Anyways, he plays through this cut and this thing's infected. He's riding the bus. I'm like, buddy, you you you're, what are you doing? Go to the hospital. Fuck that. We could come back and. Anyways, we we lose in game five, four or five. He has to go to the hospital and then fucking I'm not lying, boys. Almost lost his leg. It was so infected. Like that's the type of guy he was. Uh, I I love Zenit Kanopka, but yeah, when when he first signed with my team, I wasn't thrilled with him, but. Uh, he doesn't all mind right. to have the ice cold beer either. We had a lot of beers together. All right, all right. Th- <laughs> yeah. That's the guy Tim picked yeah. for you. Now I want to yeah. know who your yeah. favorite teammate is. Who are- These were my mentors. <laughs> yeah. Obi and, and Z were my mentors. Yeah, yeah. You, you know that we had. You sure. know that we had Stapes. We had Stapes. <laughs> we from, had fun. We had a little couple. We had Stapes in Portland, just yeah. fresh out of college. My first pro game. I walked into the locker room with, with these guys. So I remember I like, you <laughs> told me that. <laughs> like, first time I saw Z was in uh, when he was in Ottawa. And the first yeah. thing I said, who the fuck is this guy? Where did yeah. <laughs> Again, I didn't follow back then. I, w- I was out of commission for a few years, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So all of a sudden, this yeah. guy comes on. I'm like, holy shit. But uh, I was Great impressed. Way to do it, huh? right. Oops, who the fuck who is the this fuck guy? Is exactly. this guy? <laughs> Knuckles, Knuckles I, I, I don't know if I can give you one, buddy. I'm try- so I'm going to do That's this. Okay. I'm going to say... My two favorite teammates for off ice purposes are Joffrey Lupo and Scotty Upshaw. You know, I played right. with Loops in the Miners here and, and Florida with Uppy. Yeah. And we trained together and we kind of grew up together and we had a lot of fun together. My favorite guys that I played with were always the other tough guys. You know, yeah. Brian McGratton, Darcy Horderchuk, uh, Andre Waugh. Um, those guys were, were obviously, I respected what they did so much, but just fun at the rink. Like Darcy Horderchuk made every day so much fun in Vancouver. Brian McGratton. I talk about Calgary, how I was not, things weren't great. The big earn made it fun. I don't know. I always just drew to those guys. So I'm going to say probably those guys were my favorite guys to come to the rink with and battle with day in, day out. All right. Now, I don't know this, but the Scotty Upshell um, relationship, you and Scotty, how does that come about? Were you teammates? And, and like, how did it progress to where you are now? Yeah, I, I got to give some love to my boy Trevor Gillies too. Hey, eh? Stapes the train, oh, yeah. Gillis yeah, train. Yeah, I was gonna Stapes. say that. I, was I gonna can't say forget that. the like, Gillies train. Throw that out there. I, I, I love He's Trevor. The best. I love Trevor Gillies so yeah. much, man. Um, our team was so tough because of Gills, and this guy was just murdering oh. people. Knuckles, he was murdering people. I'm like, geez, this. Is a... So Gills, I love you. I'm gonna say Trevor Gillies. I'll put Gills at the top of that list. Um, okay. So yeah, the, up, he's great. the the up dog, me, me and me and Loops were living out here, you know. Uh, I, we were both ducks, me and Loops, and Loops and Uppy knew each other from Edmonton. And I officially moved out here probably when I was 25. And we just said to Uppy, like, fella, you got to get out here. Like, weather's perfect. Golf, you know, there's no real – nobody gives a shit about hockey. We can kind of do what we want to do. And, and, and Loops had this sick beach house. So I would Uppy came and, excuse me, started training together, playing golf together. Uh, and, th- and then Updog was, was huge for me. I, I went on to Florida on a PTO and – uh, you know, he let me stay at his house and really took me under his wing. And, um, you know, you talk, you talk about losing the love of the game. And, and this is no disrespect to Dale Talon because I think Dale's a good guy deep down. But I go on a PTO and, and, and I make that team flat out, boys. I mean, it's not even close. Like, I make that team 10 year in the league. I make that team easily. And he doesn't give me what I want and sends me down. And not only sends me down, but buries me down there. And that's kind of where I lost the love of the game. But, uh, yeah, me and Updog, just from living out here in California, Knuckles, you know, having fun. Yeah, it was, it's been a good run. You lost the love of the game, like where on the Riverwalk in San Antonio? <laughs> yeah, that's you ever, I fucking I played there. I, I played lo- there too. I might have lost it <laughs> yeah. there. I might have lost it's it. It's easy to lose the love of the game there. I might have yeah. lost <laughs> it there, Steve. So, uh, you know, listen, I just thought, you know, I, I made some mistakes throughout my career, but you know, I, I had a track record of obviously being a national leaguer and, and being on some good teams. And I came in and worked my balls off and training camps there for a reason if you go in and make it squad especially as a veteran i think you should be rewarded and with that and what happened in calgary with that fucking pigeon hartley i just you know i was like this is whatever i've had enough i've had enough well you already you played over 500 games as an eighth i mean you fucking did well man yeah sure i know i know thanks thank you i know i just yeah i just think 
you know, I, I think I had a couple more. Listen, the, I knew I was in trouble, Knuckles, when I was down in San Diego and these fucking draft picks keep coming in and they all look like Conor McGregor. I'm like, uh, who are yeah. you? He's like, I'm the first rounder. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm like, you're the first rounder? <laughs> you are. And I get out there, they skate 100 miles an hour. I'm like, I'm fucking done. It's over. Well, Tim always says that, but I, I don't care. If you play one NHL game, I do not care. You made it to the NHL. That's it. When you look at the number of people who even get a sniff or close to a sniff, you kidding me? It's such an accomplishment for anybody. I don't care how many games you played. If you played a thousand, you played fifteen hundred. You played fucking ten games. It doesn't matter. Played in the NHL. No, it's so true, Knuck, and it's so uh, true, Knuckles. And over the deadline, I, I looked up the stats of like, you know, four, what's the chance of a fourth rounder playing? And then like. You know, because people were giving Julian Breesbaugh shit for all these, you know, picks that tenor, you know, first of all, anyone that gives Julian Breesbaugh shit, fucking look in the mirror. But yeah. what you're saying is, well, who cares? These draft picks, it's so hard to make it. Like, if you like a player, you know, what's a fourth round pick? Because to your point, it's hard to get there. Yeah. And in the chess game, especially today, yeah, you have to play as a GM to be able to manage the cap, you know, be able to shuffle in third fourth line players so you keep it under the cap and you get something out of those players you know and you sign your big guys i mean what boston's done is insane right now what they're doing it's incredible what it's, they're it's doing. crazy yeah in the depth they have yeah, that's you know what? the thing depth like nuts yeah and the 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 best part about them is they're just a good veteran squad too that's why i'm like these guys yeah. are all veterans just fucking bring it on the yeah. guy with the I, c hey, you think they win it you think they win it well, they got to be I mean, careful. They're hard to bet against the first round. Got to be careful. That's all yeah. I'll say. I mean, I yeah. I thought Tampa Tampa struggled a little bit right now, but I still think Tampa's scary. I I mean, it's hard to bet against the Bruins. I don't have an answer for your Stapes. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the cutie <laughs> yeah. cutter. I don't. No, I, I don't know. You. I hear you. I'm gonna tell you with a leader <laughs> like Bergeron, that that kid is the consummate person. Person first, and then captain for hockey player like he he's got every aspect of the game down pat that kid he's unbelievable uh and, yeah, and he's, he doesn't make any mistakes either like he, no. i think he's probably made about five mistakes in his whole career right? it's crazy. Probably even his fault yeah and it, yeah how was it playing with uh st louis and are you surprised are you surprised he's the head coach today i'm not i love marty st louis um one of my favorite teammates of all time um i remember walking into tampa i get traded from anaheim like i was telling you guys Somehow, they, Jay Feaster gave <laughs> Jay gave up a first rounder for me. That could go down as maybe his worst trade ever. But <laughs> I, I, I walk in this dressing room and they had won the Stanley Cup. What in in oh four? When did they beat the Flames, boys? Oh whatever, oh three, oh four. Yeah, it was right before yeah, the lockout. Yeah, the, the, the last good out. Stanley Cup fought. The last good Stanley yeah, Cup yeah. final with hooking and or holding. Or the captains and fought. fought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, the last good one. And uh, I don't know anyone on this team, and, and I don't know if you guys have been traded, but it, it kind of, when you're young and you're, I'm like, holy fuck, there's Vinny LeCavier and Brad Richards and Marty St. Louis and Dan Boyle. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I just remember how big Marty's legs were when I saw him. I was like, man, he, I wonder what kind of workouts he's doing. I'm, I guess I'm not working hard enough in the offseason. My legs don't look <laughs> like that. And just right away how nice he was. And then the relationship I grew with him over the two years was, I mean, we couldn't have been probably different lifestyles, right? But love him. And I knew he'd be a great coach. Like, he, I love watching the Canadians play. I think they compete hard. Um, obviously, the Coalfield injury, uh, Caulfield injury hurt them a little bit. But I think yeah. they're in every game. I think they compete. I love Josh Anderson. Yeah. Um, and I think Marty's the right man for the job. And, I, and I'm not surprised with the – I think it's been a successful year for them, Knuckles. I don't know about you, but I, I think they compete. Listen, I never thought they are going to make the playoffs this last year, this year, next year. I don't. Um, they have work to do as far as filling this lineup, but they have some good pieces to to build around now, which which I think with Gorton and Hughes there, I think uh, they're headed in the right direction. So, um, uh, yeah, um, Marty, and I'll tell you about Marty. I never really met him, said hi to him once, and then I was coming out of the Bell Center one day, and we bumped on each other. And he said, hey, how you doing, Chris? Blah, blah, blah. What are you doing now? I know you lost your job. And I said, well, <clears throat> I just started a podcast. And and I did. We just started out. And he said, well, listen, here's my number. Call me. I'll come on in a hoppy like that. And we talked a little bit. And he said, I remember, you know, growing up, watching you. Yeah, great career, all this. But it, it just, it, nice kid. I saw him again the other night leaving the building. You know, he was talking to a group of people. He saw me. He turned right away. 
like respect nice person good person you know not, not the nose up in the air which Ex- i love exactly Exactly. And the thing I loved about Marty, the like he obviously competed like beyond belief, right? For yeah, his size and he always have cuts on his face. Cuts on his face, no <laughs> visor out there. I'm like, look at this guy's a beauty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But th- when practice was on, it was go time. But when practice was over, the, the his, his sense of humor, the laughter on the on the plane, playing cards with him, uh, going to dinners, like, like he would like to laugh. He had a good time. And to me, when it's time to work, let's go work. But fuck, we're playing in the NHL. Like it's the best league in the world. Let's have a good time while we're doing it. And, and Marty, he he was one of my favorite guys to, to shoot the shit with and laugh with and enjoy a nice glass of wine with. All right. Um, so, Shane, you've done over 100 and about 130, 135 episodes of Missing Curfew. A um, couple things. How did it all start? And when you talk about guests, who are who, – who are, Looking back, some of your favorite guests. Yeah, so you know, as we all go through when we, when we retire, I, I retired, and 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 Alpi was still playing, and, and and Loops was not living in Newport anymore, and you know, all the rest of my buddies are married with kids, and you know, I was single you know, at the time, and I had a I had a fifteen minute you know fifteen minute a week radio show with Sportsnet in Vancouver. And that's all I had going for me. I, I was looking forward to fucking garbage day just so I felt like I had a purpose, right? I was like, all right, let's get the garbage out there. Fucking, I got the best garbage. Yeah, well, yeah. I got the best garbage on the block. Yeah, look, I got that guy beat. I got that guy beat. So, you know, I, I did this podcast with The Athletic. Um, shout out to Josh Cooper, who Coop's a great kid. He's a, he's a writer for The Athletic. He was a beat writer in Nashville. Uh, the podcast was fucking terrible. I mean, it was beyond terrible. Um, but it got my reps uh, and then I said to the updog, I said, listen, I, I think we can, we can, we can do this. You know, I think we can do this. And I was doing some other stuff with Sirius XM, getting some reps in there. And as you guys know, it's all about reps. And, um, you know, we started off with our boy, Kevin Colley at Action Park Media, helped us get it off the floor uh, and then moved down to our studio here at Hall Pass Media. And it's just kind of, you know, been grinding away at it. I knew me and Uppy had chemistry that we had built through friendship and I wanted it to feel like a locker room. And I knew me and Uppy had that. Uh, so that's kind of how it started. As for our guests, you know, Tamo Solani was a great one in studio for us. Um, but I think my favorite, it's got to be the golfer, Paige Sporanic. You know, the updog got Paige on there. I think oh, that was God my uh, that was my favorite one. I've always had a little crush on her. I'm not going to lie, boys. And you said you mentioned Kevin and then you had Jimmy Hayes, right? And would you say, was it, did you like having where it was three of you? Or do you like it better with two? Uh, you know, I, I think it's probably better with three. Uh you know, obviously, thanks for bringing up Jimmy Stapes, uh, the Broadway yeah, Jimmy no, Stoops. I, yeah, uh, yeah. I love that kid. I met that kid going back to, you know, time in Florida. You know, I met him for about a week, and I said to the boys in Florida, which Millie Mitchell, Uppy, Bull, I'm like, is this kid like this every day? He yep. said, yeah, he brings it every <laughs> yep. day. And, uh, you know, got to know him there. Then my time, my short cup of coffee in Florida just made an impression on me that, you know, I knew Jimmy was going to need something when he was done playing, and I thought a podcast was perfect for him. Uh, and, and it's just, it was so, it was so tragic in so many ways. And, you know, Terrible. I talked to Jimmy two days before he died and, you know, uh. we were talking about, you know, trying to get him out here more, going to be on the road more COVID had just stopped. I said, Scoopsy, you know, we're going to get you, we're going to get you involved more, buddy. Stay with it. And you're doing a great job. We love you. And, you know, I'll never forget waking up and, and, you know, my phone fucking, I'm like, what is going on here? And, and sure mm. enough, I'm reading these texts and I just call up and I said, don't tell me. And he said, yeah, Jimmy's gone. And it was hard, oh. um, really yeah. hard. But to see it the still city of, doesn't feel real. Yeah. I mean, that guy was just one of. I mean, you no, can't I grew up with his dad. dad. He no. was the best, uh, Kevin. Yeah. yeah, I know his dad well, and uh, yeah, he's a good man. It's just terrible. Um, that's addiction, though, and alcoholism, right? And um, when yeah. uh, you're in that, you got to pay attention to it. It's you think, and again, I it's happened to me, and I've come close myself i i was gone and i i was brought back i i thank god today that i'm still here but um you always think you can do it one more time and um when you're someone like me uh you can't so uh it takes a lot of people and it's going to take a lot more uh soon so um I'll tell you the, the the thing about you know the Jimmy's funeral like the city of dorchester boston i uh, mean i was blown uh, away like i was blown away with i was it was crazy, man. The love and support. Yeah, it. I went. I went to Obes, and I was like, "Wow!" I mean, 
he a lot of people loved him, man. Like, it was crazy. How about all right? the young like, kids was... out with the hockey sticks, right? Oh, my man. my grandson was unbelievable. Was there. Yeah, my grandson. Yeah, my, it was. It, it yeah, it's a, the show of um, love and support from the community was unbelievable, right? Unbelievable, and you know what? Yeah. We, we, I had a hard time with it, boys. We almost, we almost. That was almost the end of missing curfew right there. I, I said to Uppy, I said, Ups, I don't know if I can keep doing this, buddy. I gotta, I gotta take a breather and let's, let's just take some time away. And I, it was probably a month after Jimmy died before we got back in the studio. And then finally, closer to a month, I just said, you know, I was talking to his wife, Kristen, a little bit, and, and you know, she was telling me how much Jimmy loved it. And I just said, you know what, fuck it, we gotta keep it going for Hazy, you know. And we have a great picture of Hazy you know, in our studio that, that's on NHL every week. And, 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 you know, we're just trying to keep his tradition going and, and you know, stuff like that. So it, it was tough for us, though. It was really tough. Yeah. Um, it, it, you guys are together in a studio, which is awesome. Tim and I have been together one time. And we we started this and we never met yeah, each other. Yeah, we started person. it online. We never <laughs> met each other in person. And then we... He needed an Asian guy to get the no, whole, no, no, whole no. thing. Little little yeah. culture, eh, James? No, just to be <laughs> inclusive, yeah, yeah. Tim. It's only inclusivity. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'm woke, Tim. Podcasting's for I'm everyone. Woke, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, but we did get to meet each other finally. We went to Pittsburgh in studio, and it was awesome until Tim disappeared one day. He was fucking out of there like a thief in the fucking night. <laughs> I mean, where'd he go? He had to get home somehow. I don't know. He come up with some excuse. He had to go home. Um, I think he missed his wife. Um, Family guy. (laughs) Good family guy. Good family guy. You know, come on. How about, like, here I'm thinking, I, I love to do it in the studio all the time, right? Joe Rogan's Joe Rogan, right? Um, And Chicklets, obviously, what they do is awesome. But... To have an in-guest studio every week is a difficult thing to achieve unless you do it like this. How about how's that for you? I, I like. Would you rather talk? I, like I'd rather be in the same room, the three of us, but we can't. It's, yeah, it's great we have sure. the technology to do it, but I'd so much rather be in the same room. But I, I think the yeah, it, the number of guests you can get is so increased when you don't have to be in the same room. Yeah, for, for guests, it's it's obviously easier to you know. I, I wish we were sitting in the you know same room right now. Uh, it would be a lot better. Um, you know, for me and Uppy especially, it, it's it's night and day when we're in the same room. I mean, when when I, I listen to every podcast before we put it out, not because I want to hear my stupid voice. It's because I'm just like I'm trying to worry about timing and, and my questions and whatever. I don't know, maybe. But I notice the difference between me and Uppy when when he's when we're not in studio to when we are the flow of it, and then you could just feed off of each other, right? Like obviously, you know, you guys are both overly prepared today. You guys are pros, but when we're in the same room, you know, we can bounce each ideas off each other. If we, you know, it just seems to add more to the conversation. So we're we're lucky that we have Hall Pass Media. I don't know if I would do it if I couldn't do it in studio. Um, I, I don't know. I just it's it's way more fun when you're in there with and you're actually feeding off each other. Yeah. Uh- yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's just easier to, I mean, you're just like having a real, you know, you get to see someone's reaction. Exactly. You know, sometimes I could say something and I'm like, I don't know if fucking Nuts <laughs> like that or not. And then there, there's, there's always, <laughs> the, assume we did. Yeah. There's always the, 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 um, the delay, right? Delay? Yeah. You're like, fuck, was that not, <laughs> yeah. was that not funny? Did Knuckles not like that? Or I, I, yeah. Escapes. How about a reaction yeah. here? <laughs> I remember at the beginning oh, we man. had a delay, like someone would be talking Right. And the, because our internet connection, we hadn't figured it out yet. I'm hardwired now, but I was um, on the Wi Fi before. And then, like, Tim would say something, and then it'd be over, and the guest would m- say his answer, and then it would still be going. I'd be asking a question. It was all screwed up, and I'm now. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, we got that all no, figured I... out, which is a good thing. Um, all right. How about. I, I leave you with this or make this the last one. You've been generous with your time. Um, and we appreciate it. Um, where does fellas come from? Fellas, fellas, <laughs> fellas, <laughs> fellas. <laughs> Bella. Bella. Everybody always says you to me, what? say, say car, <laughs> say park. Where does fellas yeah, yeah. come from? 
Well, Knuckles, you do have a nice Boston accent, fella. I'm not gonna lie. When you when you talk, I wish like a lot of Boston guys I play with too. It's a great accent, especially Mike. Shout out to Mike Mono. Mono had one of the best Boston accents ever. Um, you know what? It's just something we started saying out here, and I gotta give some credit to Stoli and Brad Richardson. It was kind of like Stoli, Richardson, and then me, Lupul, and Uppy. Um, and we just started saying fella, and I I I, I think it probably started more with Stoli and Richie, and then I just heard it and fella this, fella that, and. Uh, it, it's grown into something that's that's been pretty cool. I mean, our guys at our golf course, when we walk in, they're that's like, fella, great. what's up, fella? That's great. So uh, <laughs> I got to give some love to Stoli and Richie, babe. Brad Richardson, Jared Stoll. I, I think they may have threw out the first fella, and we just kind of ran with it, Knuckles. That's awesome. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Well, I got a question. I know you took a lot of saunas in Finland. Did you eat a lot of wings, too? <laughs> Steve. HP, don't they have, like... <laughs> Staves, I was Go so ahead. I was so fat when I went to Finland, brother. So, <laughs> listen, I I'm I'm. It's like New Year's just passed. I was in Aspen on a, on a New Year's trip with the boys, and I wake up in West Hollywood at my girlfriend's house at the time, and my agent's like calls me. I'm like, ah, what's up, fella? He's like, you want to go play hockey in Finland? I'm like, fuck no, I don't want to go play hockey in Finland. Finland was the, <laughs> yeah. Finland was the one league that I never had any interest in playing. I wanted to go to Russia. <laughs> Sweden, maybe, but typically I'll be honest, boys. I wanted to go to Russia, but I could never get a contract. But anyways, I'm like, I think I'm just going to take the year off and I'll bounce back next year. Right. This is my thinking boys. And my agent's like, <laughs> yeah, right. my agent's like, you take the year off. You're done. I'm like, all right, <laughs> fuck it. So I jump on this plane to Finland and I get there boys. And this old Finnish defenseman, uh, unfortunate accident. He lost his eye playing hockey, she, bald head. So he's got one eye and a bald head. And he sees my fat ass come into this rink and he's just licking his chops, right? Like he's just, he's like, oh, I got this NHL. Or he's, so Stapes, I'm running stairs. I'm fucking running outside. I, I'm like Rocky from Rocky Four. I'm running out in the snow. I'm like, what am I doing here? So to answer your questions, I didn't eat a whole lot because I, I was like, I had to lose like 20 pounds probably. I was so fat. So a lot of saunas, not a lot of food. And, and Knuckles, you talk about like, that was the lowest, like I've never been... I'm still a single guy. I've been alone a lot in my life. I've never felt so lonely and, and just, I wanted to come home, you know, playoffs are about to start. And I was yeah. the hockey player in me wanted to, wanted to win, but like the human being in me was like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm homesick. I, I'm, I miss my home. I miss, you know, I didn't have any North Americans with me in Finland, so it was tough, but those boys love a good sauna. I mean, uh, I, I, oh, fuck. Yeah. I'm like, no. boys, I, I see your cocks enough. Yeah. I don't need to see it again. Yeah. It's like, I just showered with <laughs> yeah. you. 20 minutes ago. I don't need to like hang out with you naked. I don't know if it yeah. was just my oh, team Steve's, but they all had ropes on them too. I'm like, look at these guys. They oh, all yeah, the fun. Like, all over there. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're such nice people. You know, and I, I, I felt like that many times over in Europe, just alone. You know what I mean? Did, they know English, but they speak, you know, they're not speak Finnish, but you know, I mean, if you don't have another North American, right? Yeah. We had one but, Swedish guy who his, his lifestyle wasn't exact. I took him out one night in Helsinki. Shout out to Aussie Van and Aussie Van and hooked me up with one of my, Aussie, one of his buddies. One of his buddies in Helsinki. So I was in Helsinki every fucking Saturday night I could. But anyways, I took this young Swedish, not young, but this Swedish demon, Porcelain was his name. I took him out one night, boys. And he, he's like, I'm never going out with you again. Yeah, I was like, fair right? enough, fair enough, fair enough. So Say, this is the yeah. NHL kid right here. <laughs> You're like, I still got it. Come on, buddy. This is how we do it over there. You know what, Knuckles? I I, I was texting Loops and Uppy when I was playing there. And, and, and the, the league's unbelievable, as Stapes knows. The league's great. Their junior program's great. All they do is work out and play hockey. I'm like, boys, this yep. country's coming. Yep. Like, watch out for these guys. Yeah. And sure enough, the success they've had the last, right? Snapes, I mean, they're, yeah, they're I know. I country. mean, they're always, they're machines, man. Machines. It's crazy. Uh, just a couple, couple quick things, and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to yeah, ask no, no, you. We have time. I'm going to ask you either ors. You got to pick one or the other. Okay. Love it. All right. Blondes or brunettes? Both. No, you got to pick one or the <laughs> <I know>. other. <laughs> I'm going to say, I've been on a little blonde streak here, Knuckles, but I'm going to say overall brunettes probably. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, burger or a hot dog? <laughs> is it the Bell Center hot dog, Knuckles, or what? Is it the hot dog for the Bell, Bell Center? Bell Center hot dog. <laughs> I'm saying Bell Center hot dog then. All right. Over easy or scrambled? Oh, great question. These questions, you're, you you know my you you got right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> he did his homework. Food, you he did, did my his homework. homework. Okay? <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> over easy. All right, 
Starbucks or Timmy's? Starbucks. Okay. I gotta be honest with you. My you one made the move from buddy, Canada. Yeah. yeah. Starbucks. Port Hope is in the rear view mirror, folks. Isn't it? <laughs> Gillies or McGratton? <sighs> Fuck. I gotta give it to the train. Bigger and I love you, but I gotta give it to the train. I love the train. <laughs> All right. Pizza or Chinese food? <laughs> Ah, uh, pizza. What? <laughs> I threw. I threw. I threw enough of them out there. I threw enough pizzas out there, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and the last one. Oh, that's funny. Republican or Democrat? Oh fuck, Republican, buddy. Good, you're on my team. <laughs> come on, come on, yeah, man. Right. You're the man. I think we're on the same hey, team. Uh, Knuckles, as my one buddy said out here about Democrats, he said, I, I can't afford to be a Democrat. I said, fuck, good answer, buddy. Neither can I. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm neither. I am an independent. You're a patriot. Yeah, I'm an independent. Well, listen, I, I, I'm lucky enough that I have my green card in the States, yeah. but I, I'm not a citizen. So really, I probably should just keep my big mouth shut because I, I, I don't really get a vote anyways. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll take that test, Knuckles. You think I can pass that test? How hard do you think that test is? Yeah, you can pass it. Come on. I, I, I'm a permanent resident up here. Like, so I can do everything a Canadian can do. I get all your rights of a Canadian, but I can't vote. And honestly, they say a vote makes a difference. Doesn't mean shit. Those people don't care <laughs> about us. That's true. They don't, they don't true, give actually. a shit about that's true. the common man. They don't. They worry about themselves, enrich themselves, and that's it. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Raw Knuckles podcast. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe.